Now we've looked at arrays and we looked at breaking these into procedures as well. Uh, something else may arise in which we need a different type of array. Imagine if we wanted to start storing data, not just as, for instance, Bob, Mary and Fred, which is just in one dimension. But imagine if we wanted to store details of, um, say for instance, my, my classes that I've got. So uh, C block, E block and F block are three of the computing classes. And let's see, test one, test two, and test three. And this is the average score per group. Um, could be an average percentage. So C group might be 67, E group might be 58, and F group might be 49. Second test, C group slips a little to 62, E group goes up to 64, and F group moves up to 56. C group may continue to drop. E group hovers around the same. And F group, the average goes to 76. Now, that kind of tabular view of data is what we most commonly see inside uh, a spreadsheet, as you can see here. And we can see we've got our rows and we've got our columns. So how do we get that into arrays? Well, we could have a separate array for tests, a separate array for test 2, a separate array for test 3, or a separate array for C group, E group, or the F group. But what we could do is create one array to hold all that data. And we could actually do this as a two-dimensional array. So a two-dimensional array works as follows. So let's have a look at that spreadsheet again. So it's three by three, three by three as an integer. So we can see here, it has the first aspect, for example, the row and then the column. So looking at that data, we may want to process it test by test or group by group. Okay, I'm going to set up that data. So let me have a setup. The only problem is we're doing procedures like this. We need to keep everything global. So set up scores one one scores one two. So we've got sixty-seven, then we're going to be sixty-two, then fifty-eight, I'm just going to make these up, so I might start at 47, 2, 2, 1, 2, Okay, so that's that setup. Let me just call the setup. There we go. Um, so, quite simply, how do we output that data? Well, I could have a second array for classes. Because the classes isn't two dimensional, classes has only got three blocks. So, I could have this as a Can't use the word class because it's a reserved word. Uh, let me call this class block. Okay, let's set these up. So block one equals C. Oops. Class block two is E. F. 
this out. Let's go down there. Okay, so they're set up. So let's have a look at how we could output it. To output it, if we think what our for loop does, equals 1, 2, 3. And if I did a console right line, scores in index. Oh, hang on a minute, I've got two indexes. What do I do here? So the first one I want to go 1 in 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. So this is going up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's doing 1, 2, 3, 3 times. Therefore, we have two for loops. We have what's called a nested for loop. So we've got the outer loop and the inner loop. So this is now saying, if that index 2, so the first time around this for loop, index 2 is given 1. Index is just given 1. And this does this 3 times, so it'll be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. Get the next index 2, which is 2. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. And that goes through every single one of them. Now, at the minute, I've got that outputted on to several lines. Let's put that onto here, put a little bit of a space, and after each inner for loop, I'll get it to output again. So let me just show you this running, and we've whizzed through this really quickly, but there you see that data, and that should marry up with our table here. Obviously, I changed the values, but the first row is there. Great. So how do we get the classes on there as well? We'll do that next. At the start of each for loop, because that only appears once, we don't want it going in the inner loop. It needs to be in the outer loop. So I'm going to put a console right, so it stays on the same line. Class block, in position index, and that one's index 2. Sorry for the slight model there. That could have done with being index 1 and the next one being index 2. But no problem. And let's run that now. And there you've got the block and the scores. Let's add a header along the top. And that needs to be even before the loop. Console right line. Block. Test 1. Test 2, test 3. Let's have a look at how these look. These are going to be quite far off. Yep, yeah. but what could we do instead? Well, we could add formatting that you've previously looked at in order to format these columns. But that shows you how a two dimensional array works. Okay, I'll leave that one with you to have a go at the car sales. Works in a very much a similar way.